Do gluten-free foods cause weight gain? You bet they do. They cause extravagant weight gain. They're very unhealthy. You know, I wrote the Wheat Belly books where my intention was to alert everybody that farmers and agribusiness had changed the wheat plant somewhere around the 1970s and 1980s in an effort to increase yield per acre. They introduced all kinds of changes to the wheat plant such that the traditional four and a half to five foot tall wheat plant we all remember as kids is now replaced by an 18 to 24 inch tall, very thick stalked, large seed head, what's called semi-dwarf strain. And this is a very high yield strain. And so it did achieve that agricultural end. But in the process, they change numerous uh, components in the wheat plant. For instance, they changed the gliadin protein within gluten. And that resulted in a fourfold increase in celiac disease and other forms of autoimmune disease diseases. They also uh, change the immune potential of the gliadin protein such that there's more type 1 diabetes and rheumatoid arthritis and other autoimmune diseases being triggered by the gliadin protein of wheat. They increase the content of phytates. Phytates are very effective pest resistant compounds in the wheat plant. It allows the wheat plant to be protected from insects and molds. But phytates when consumed by humans bind any positively charged mineral like iron, zinc, magnesium, manganese, calcium, and you pass it out into the toilet. So the increased phytate content of wheat uh, today causes numerous mineral deficiencies, most commonly iron deficiency anemia and the impaired immunity of uh, not getting all the zinc in your diet. They also increase the content of wheat germaglutinin. Wheat germaglutinin, like phytates, is also pest resistant. But the increased content of wheat germaglutinin made the wheat plant a much more potent bowel toxin because wheat germaglutinin is very toxic to the human gastrointestinal tract. They also increased the content of amylopectin A. Amylopectin A is the super carbohydrate of wheat and grains that explains why two slices of whole wheat bread raises blood sugar higher than six teaspoons of table sugar. It's the high digestibility of the amylopectin A. So my intention in writing all those wheat belly books was to alert people that bad things had been done to the wheat plant. They took something that was not all that good for you in the first place, traditional strains of wheat. There's problems even with that. And then they magnified the problem inadvertently. None of this was, pur was purposeful. They inadvertently created a monster with all these toxic effects. But so my intention was to alert people to that so that they could remove it from their diet. And lo and behold, when people do that, all kinds of wonderful things happen to your health. You lose a lot of weight, your blood sugar comes down, insulin resistance recedes, numerous health conditions begin uh, reversing, rheumatoid arthritis, joint pain, leg edema, high blood pressure, acid reflux, irritable bowel syndrome, numerous health uh, problems began to recede. Unfortunately, some people heard the wheat belly message as a gluten-free message. So you can be wheat-free and grain-free and gluten-free, but the tripping point, the problem comes when the food manufacturers persuade you that gluten-free processed foods are a good choice. They're terrible choices. You know, if there's a natural food that is naturally gluten-free, like an avocado, that's perfectly fine. An egg, naturally gluten-free. How about pork chops or a piece of salmon or green beans? all naturally gluten-free. They're great. The problem comes when food manufacturers make processed gluten-free foods like bagels, breads, pizza crusts, baking mixes, etc. and use cornstarch, tapioca starch, potato flour, or rice flour. Well those four flours are also rich in amylopectin A and thereby raise blood sugar as high or often even higher than uh, wheat products. And the dry pulverized nature of those flours increases surface area for digestion exponentially. So the highest blood sugars you'll ever see are eating gluten-free foods or after eating gluten-free foods. Cornstarch, for instance, foods made of cornstarch, which is a very common ingredient in gluten-free foods, has a glycemic index of 100, the highest of all foods. So what happens when you consume, say, a bagel that's made with gluten-free flours? To illustrate, take this one uh, bagel that you can buy in the store, gluten-free bagel. There are 45 grams of total carbs, 3 grams fiber. To get net carbs, 
you subtract fiber from total carbs. So 45 minus 3, 42 grams net carbs. Very high. We know that anytime an adult or most adults consume more than 15 grams net carbs, your blood sugar starts to go up. At 42, it starts to go way up. And because it's the amylopectin A, largely, uh, in these gluten-free flours, it sends your blood sugar up higher than an equivalent quantity of table sugar, sucrose. And that's because of the ingredients in this bagel, all highly digestible gluten-free starches. So gluten-free baked products are awful for health. Now people say, oh, I have celiac disease, I have to be gluten-free. Yeah, you can be gluten-free by eating eggs and avocados, right? Those kinds of naturally gluten-free foods. But don't fall for the nonsense from gluten-free food manufacturers who don't know what they're doing or don't care what they're doing and make their products with those awful, awful ingredients with rich in amylopectin A, high surface area, and send your blood sugar sky high. Now, what this does not mean is that you'll never have another slice of pizza or a cheesecake or a wonderful muffin or a cookie or uh, noodles. You can, but we're going to recreate all those things with safe ingredients. So I'll make, for instance, a pizza crust with almond flour, ground golden flaxseed, psyllium seed, and maybe a few other nut meals or other safe meals and flours. And you can have all those foods. At holidays, you can have biscuits and gravy, a cheesecake, pie, cookies, muffins, all those things, in addition to the standard foods. You can entertain friends and family and serve them safe foods. Another thing to be aware of is, while if you're gonna be wheat and grain free, as, they are, as people are in my Wheat Belly and Undoctored programs, other people can eat your food that you've recreated with these flours and safe ingredients. They can eat a slice of your, your pizza and enjoy it, it's delicious, have no problems. But if you try to eat their food, you develop problems. The longer you're wheat and grain free, the sicker you get when you are re-exposed to wheat and grains. So know that, it's a one-way street, okay? They can eat your food safely, have no reactions. You can eat their food without getting sick. So there's great power in being wheat and grain free don't fall into the gluten-free trap and end up 30 pounds heavier with high blood sugars, insulin resistance, and all the health problems that come from those uh, responses. If you want the most recent version of my program, I've reissued the entire program in a concise way, everything updated, success stories updated, recipes updated, everything in the Wheat Belly revised and updated edition that's available in all bookstores.